Let me start this video with a promise. This is the last time I will review a small box. Uh, fingerprints. This is the Minis Forum. It doesn't look like a forum, but it's called a Mini S Forum or Minis Forum. Something like that. But this is it. This is the box. The Z83F. I had to look at the back of it then just to get the model number. That's how cool it is. The model that I have been sent is the Z83-F, specifically the 64 gigabyte model. It has an Intel Atom X5 Z8350 processor with two megabytes of cache and it turbos up to 1.92 gigahertz. It comes with a full Windows 10 home license. It has Intel HD Graphics 400. It has four gigabytes of DDR3 and it's got a 64 gigabyte SSD. Although I'm not really sure it's going to uh, perform particularly quickly. It has 1000 Mbps LAN, which is very nice. It also has ABGN 2.4 GHz and 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi, so again, very nice. It has Bluetooth 4.0, it's got a built-in antenna for Wi-Fi, and it supports SD cards up to 128 GB. It also supports dual screens. So let's have a look at the actual unit, shall we? Here it is, the Minis Forum. Let's have a look at the sides. We've got the front, which has nothing on it. We have the left-hand side, which has VGA. Very handy, very old-fashioned, very useful. And then on the side, we have a SD card slot, full-sized, up to 28 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes. We have two USB 2.0 ports. We have a power button. Very handy if you want to switch it on and switch it off. Then round the back is where all the action is. So we have a power port. We have a USB 3 port. Very, very handy indeed. We have HDMI out which does output at 4K, very handy. We have Ethernet, and then we have headphone jack. And we've also, uh, we've got like a little pinhole there for if we need to factory reset or just reset the unit, I assume. Not gonna test that out. Uh, on the underneath, pretty boring. We've just got a model number and details of the power required to switch it on all in all a very nice small package unfortunately it doesn't come with a visa mount which is a shame really because uh, yeah it'd be nice to put it on the back of a monitor or indeed a television which you can do now so without further ado let's get it switched on Okay, so I actually, um, I, I told a lie earlier, it's actually a 64-bit Windows, and it's um, Windows 10 Pro, it's no home edition, so that's a, a pleasant surprise. As you can see, the manufacturer's Best Star HK, I'm assuming that's Hong Kong Limited. I've got the model number there, Z83F, I've got the Intel Atom X5 Z8350 CPU, at 1.44 gigahertz and we have four gigabytes of DDR3 and we can see it's 64 bit operating system with a 64 based 64 bit processor um, so yeah quite quite decent specs for the price let's gonna have a look in the device manager see what uh, what we've got additionally to what we've just seen so 
Um, it does. It does actually have a microphone, so you can use a like a hands-free kit or something in the um, in the headphone jack, uh, and you can actually use the microphone feature there. So it doesn't have a battery. Don't know why that comes up under batteries. Um, we've got Bluetooth, which I already knew about. Um, some other bits. So disk drive. That that USB three device is uh, is just a memory stick I've put in there to record this footage. Uh, we've got a SanDisk DF4064, so that's uh, that's interesting. I, I kind of expected it to be some unusual manufacturer that uh, <laughs> that would be unheard of or very rare that you came across. So we've got the Intel HD graphics. It's the Intel HD 400 graphics. I don't think it's going to tell me in here, but uh, yeah. The beauty of uh, the display adapter in here is uh, the fact that it'll output 4K and it will also uh, it will play 4K video without any struggle. And it's also got Intel Quick Sync, so you can actually use this to uh, to edit video, um, providing you use a um, piece of software that that can take advantage of Quick Sync. Quick Sync video. I don't know if you you're aware of this, but that is where um, the GPU the on-chip GPU will take care of some of the rendering uh, when you are encoding videos. So it's very handy. So we've got firmware and we've got a uh, load of human interface uh, devices. I'm not sure why there's all those on there. Never mind. Um, Intel AV Stream Camera. Not sure what that is. Uh, never mind. So... The thermal framework there, um, that's that's going to take care of the thermal throttling that this will inevitably do. Keyboard, mice, monitor, network adapter. So we've got, um, there we go, so it's a Broadcom Wi-Fi and we've got Gigabit uh, Realtek um, Ethernet, which is really good. Um, portal device, USB drive, we've got a COM port. Not sure what that's all about. Um, there's the uh, the processor. We've got an SD host adapter. A lot of the uh, this stuff's just the Intel system on chip stuff. Um, software devices. So all right, okay. Yeah, we get into some really boring stuff here that we don't really care about. But yeah, USB three very handy. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to close that down. And we are going to run Cinebench. So I've got I've got the task manager up here. Um, now the reason I've done that is because I want you to see what's running on this device when we're not really doing anything. So as you can see here, uh, we've got I've got open hardware monitor up here. So the reason I've done that, I want to monitor the uh, the temperatures. So I would I would class this as as being an idle workload really. Um, as, 19% of the CPU being used, but it's just background things going on and, and open hardware monitor. Plus, I am um, I am recording um, this footage, so that's that's going to be taking up some of the CPU. Although I am using QuickSync actually, so if we saw it the other way around to GPU somewhere. I don't know where it is, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It, it is, uh, if we go into here, you'll see that it's running 3D at like 100%, and that's because I'm encoding the video using QuickSync. So that frees up a lot of the CPU there. And you will see that the, the CPU does change speed. Uh, that's in order to try and keep these temperatures down, but not very successful at the moment. I am um, in an ambient temperature room, so it's probably about 22 degrees, and the CPU is... Currently 82, 83, uh, and it's it's very hot, the device. It's not really doing anything. It's just really hot. <laughs> so let's see how hot it gets, and let's see if it throttles if we run Cinebench on the CPU. So I will uh, speed all this up, but just keep your eyes over here. I'll just slow that down here. So far, the the CPU has only been running at 50% of the clock speed, the advertised clock speed. So 
It's been running at 0.72 gigahertz. And the temperature is rising a little bit. <laughs> I'll just slow it down again. Um, as you can see, the uh, the CPU has slowed down even further. So it looks like when it gets to 83 degrees, it drops to one third of the performance. Um, it has gone slightly up again, up to 0.55 gigahertz per core. Now that that is appalling, absolutely appalling. Wow, finally it's finished and it has scored an appalling 20. <laughs> oh dear. Hmm, no, I definitely would not recommend this. Um, it runs so hot that you, you just can't really do anything with it. <laughs> like, even when I was testing it, when uh, when there wasn't really anything going on, when I was just performing a couple of updates or downloading some software just through Chrome, um, it was it was running red hot still, and that well, how difficult is it just to put a fan in these? I mean, yeah, I know they want the them to be silent, and I realise that they also want the um, the the power consumption to be exceptionally low but even still like you can you could cobble something together with a a, a really cheap like one dollar or one pound fan off ebay and and connect it onto the uh to the right place of the motherboard to draw some power or you could even adapt one of the usb ports to to um extract the hot air or to push cool air through the other side Really, really bad design. Um, why are we still getting devices like this in 2018? Um, on paper, I was quite excited about this. The, the specs are good. 4 gigabyte RAM and 64 gig storage. You're normally looking at 1 gig, maybe 2 at a push, and 32 gig storage, which is nowhere near enough. You can't even update Windows on those. So, yeah, great. You can update Windows, but bad. Um, you can cook eggs on it, or bacon, whatever you want, or or beans. You could put a pot of beans on the top of it and and cook them. And well, actually, yeah, you could use it to cook your breakfast, but it's expensive for for that. Um, yeah, don't buy this. Um, this is gonna be. No, I was gonna say I was gonna say I could use this as a media server, but I say that about everything. This is going on eBay. It's crap. Uh, it's going on eBay. Some poor soul is going to buy it. And um, yeah. See you later. Thank you for watching that. And if you enjoyed my ridiculous benchmarking of a ridiculous fanless designed PC that should not even exist, then please hit subscribe. And if you can think of anything else I could use this for, other than selling it on eBay to um, pay for a couple of pints, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.